Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I create images out of it. Today I'm doing a January wrap up for you, so I'm just letting you know what I've been up to and what I've read. First off, I'm kicking off with This Is Going To Hurt, which was by Adam Kay. So this is a personal memoir about a junior doctor who um, had a short period as a doctor and then eventually left and you find out all his different stories and experiences of that time. Um, both of my sisters kind of work in this universe uh, of the NHS. My younger sister is a lecturing nurse and my older sister is a carer for mentally unwell women. Um, so this uh, resonates with me on a personal level just to give me a bit more insight to my sister's experiences. And I myself used to um, work with the National Autistic Society, so I have experienced working in a, in a caring um, environment. But to understand what a junior doctor goes through and the hours that they put in and the way in which they work was an incredibly eye-opening experience to just know the, the sheer... Uh, volume and density of the work that they're involved in and the risks that they take it's just incredible and it gives you such a different profound respect for what they do. I thought what was really brilliant about the book in particular is that it's handled with a lot of humour and personal insights. It really gives you the perspectives of um, the range of experiences that you could go through um, meeting lots of different people and that's from just a lack of common sense through to some really obscure and strange places that people put items in their bodies. Uh, <laughs> it was certainly an interesting and unique ride and I'd also recommend it as an audiobook because I got it for free from BorrowBox through my library. It takes about five hours to listen to and it's actually narrated by Adam Kay so it's a really good quick read. The next one which I want to talk about is The Raven Cycle. Now I have been reading this from the end of December up and I've got just about an hour left on the final book which is The Raven King. It's split up into four books. It starts with The Raven Boys and um, goes on to uh, Dream Thieves and then Blue Lily, Lily Blue and finally The Raven King. It starts off where, where you uh, learn about Blue Sergeant who um, comes from a family of psychics. Now she doesn't actually have the uh, psychic ability herself, she enhances other people's psychic abilities. So she's kind of like a amplification unit. Um, and she starts out at the beginning of The Raven Boys where she um, is doing this thing in which they go off annually and they find out who are going to die over the course of the next year. And it helps enable families to kind of get their things together who are clients and then they are able to set all things in order and be aware of who is going to die and when. Um, and she comes across this one guy who is a part of a group of boys from her local school. Um, and that's where she meets these raven boys. And there's four different characters. There's Adam, Rowan, Gansey, and Noah. And each of them have these distinct characteristics that really kind of blossom throughout the process of the four books. And they just keep on manifesting and expanding. Likewise with Blue Sergeant as well. It kind of reminded me of the experience of watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because you've got this kind of core crew, but then... Uh, bits happen to them individually that m really make them their own beings with real character development and they gain certain qualities uh, which are quite mystic and wonderful um, and but very different to each other but they all weave into each other. And what I did appreciate uh, towards the end of the series is that there is this male-on-male -male romance that does blossom. So there's a lot of really wonderful things to get invested with this book but it's just a fun, enjoyable fantasy novel which is set in our world but in situated in a fictional town in Virginia um, which was kind of confusing for me because there's lots of like references to Wales and because <laughs> there's actually this Monmouth manufacturing company um, uh, uh, and Monmouth is actually very close to my hometown it's like a 30 minute drive I was like 
why are all these um, people speaking American? Surely they should have Welsh accents. And I was just getting my head around the fact that, no, this is a fictional town in Virginia, and the, this is a different group of people who are not in Wales right now. But all this kind of weird, mystical stuff is happening around these ley lines of power. And there is this king which basically came over from Wales and settled be in this area because of these this kind of bubble, this pocket of power, um, and the whole structure of the fantasy is wrapped around this location. And that just like builds and builds and expands, and I particularly enjoyed and loved everything that happened in the second book because of the sheer imagination that's involved in it, and the scale of it, um, and it was just very unlike any other book which I've, uh, I've read in terms of the fantasy genre. So it's certainly a series, if you want a cool, fun, quick series to plough through, uh, I mean, it has just I've read these over this course of the month, it, uh, it's just a, a really brilliant, fun, wacky ride. <laughs> the next book which I want to talk about is The Third Reel, which is by S.J. Uh, Nordy. So I read this with a buddy read with the wonderful Sean the Book Manic. If you haven't checked out his channel, please do. He's a wonderful human being and it was an absolute delight to read this with him. I feel like we both needed each other through this process and we both really, really enjoyed the first half of the book and less so on the second half. And if you don't want any spoilers, um, then I encourage you to read this book but have uh, an open mind that this might not be the most satisfying ending and that might taint your experience of the read. So if you want to go away and not know any more about this and read it, please do because I think everybody should. I won't spoil too much, I just want to talk a little bit more in depth about my experience with the book. So this book focuses on a young gay man called Ateen who goes over from South Africa and ends up in London where it's in the like, ni uh, 1980s and he's hanging out in these squats and he meets this guy called Axel, who he forms this deep bond and infatuation with. Now, me and Sean refer to Axel as Axel, Axel Murderer, uh, because he's just an odd ball and <laughs> he's, uh, he does these art installations which are quite popular, but they're also super weird. He's a um, uh, um, paediatric nurse which looks after kids, but uh, in a, uh, and incorporates elements of the the kids' hair and stuff into the artwork, which is very unsettling to read. And he actually draws Atina into that process, and he just allows it to happen. And uh, he Axel is just an incredibly unlikable character I found throughout, and he he's just a real. He's a real bad egg, really. He's that type of guy who you've certainly probably experienced if you've ever had a bad relationship with another person and they've just been self-centred and self-orientated. You know the type of guy. So that made it very difficult for me to uh, follow Etienne, in, who basically runs off over to Berlin to try and pursue Axel, who's gone over there. It's all wrapped up in this mystery, which is about the third reel, a three-part film, which has been broken up into these different parts, and he comes across the first part, and he's on the hunt for these other two parts, but it's all wrapped up in the mystery of um, who, um, where Axel has gone, and he's trying to find him. So he ends up in East Berlin, saying that he's going to create this film, but really he's on this pursuit for this Berlin Chronicle. Um, to find these missing two parts. And it really spirals into lots of weird and wonderful places. What I would highlight is that there is a really interesting and wonderful relationship between architecture and brutalism within what is described, which makes you feel quite unsettled and quite paranoid through the parts where he's in um, East and West Berlin. Um, but there's also some friendships there that the pair of us really wanted him to continue. Um, and uh, that whole element was quite de devastating to the pair of us because neither of us had any invested interest in Axel. Um, so in regards to where that all ends up kind of developing and where it leads, ended up in a real plateau for me as an experience and it was just incredibly dissatisfying because it was not the ending that I was looking for or hoping for. 
And because it's in the 1980s and because there's this um, may, male gay element in there, it leads into um, the era of the AIDS epidemic and that just felt like a bit of an annoying get out in terms of what happens in conclusion to some of the characters there. Um, which just irritated me deeply. Uh, and I also felt like the, the mystery of the, the th third reel was a bit shallow uh, in terms of what actually happens and how it ends. But the actual experience and the journey that a team goes through is really rich and really rewarding. And we, I think the pair of us found like the process of particularly the first two parts of the book is split up into three parts were um, were really cool. Were it like you did feel like you were going on a really interesting journey, and there were lots of these little vignettes and insights to a different part of history, particularly around music and culture and you really got a sense and insight of that time and it highlighted a lot of things which I wasn't necessarily aware of and it's a really interesting kind of time capsule in that way but in terms of the actual characters and the mystery side and just Axel, Axel Murderer, just really really irritating and just really really dissatisfying towards the end made me so angry, so incredibly angry and I'd like properly ranted at Sean for ages about it because I just couldn't get over it, <laughs> basically. Um, so, uh, I mean, this book is good, uh, but this book is also frustrating, problematic, um, flawed, um, but insightful and unique and distinctive. So I, f I feel like really challenged by this book and what I think and feel about it. It is incredibly cin cinematic and I think I would probably actually prefer it to watch it. It feels like I invested quite a lot of time and came out with very little <laughs> reward by the end of it, but had a very interesting, different and deep experience with this book as a process. So like, yeah, a whole lot of stuff going on there. But it was an incredible delight to do it with Sean because we also shared a lot of different stories as we were going through this process as well. So it's definitely something I'd recommend as a buddy read properly because you also have the security of someone else taking you through that process as well. So there we go. <laughs> but I would recommend checking out his channel because he will share some very different views, I think. But I do feel like with distance, I will probably reflect and think of this book with fondness. That's probably enough from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed my insights to my January reads. What are you reading at the moment and how is your energy now that we are progressing into February? I hope that you're all doing really well and good and that you are enjoying your LGBT history month. Uh, take care, this is enough from me. I will see you all again real soon. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.